With tonight's 119 to 115 win against the Denver Nuggets, the Phoenix Suns remain undefeated when Kevin Durant has played. 8 and 0 on the year with two games remaining before we head into the playoffs. Kevin Durant has fit in very seamlessly and especially on the offensive end recently has really started to click. In particular in this game against the Nuggets, we really saw things be put together during the fourth quarter. The Suns just hands down out executed a very injury laden Nuggets roster and yeah, it was just really impressive to see how the Suns team can operate in late game situations when it really matters. Trying to close out a win, it just felt like the Suns might be unguardable. I know that's a, a big word to use, but it's really hard to find a way to stop the Suns when you've got two amazing creators of advantage and Devin Booker and Kevin Durant who are great shot makers who attract a lot of attention leaving open guys like Torrey Craig and Chris Paul to make timely shots good passing all around looking for the open guy and using the set plays that the Suns run over and over and over it's just hard for teams to counter it with the type of weapons they can put out onto the floor it's when you got Devin Booker, Chris Paul hitting seven threes in a game, that's his career high, and Kevin Durant and DeAndre Ayton, and a guy like, you know, Torrey Craig, who I think he's shooting, he's still shooting like 39% from three on the year, 39.2% on the year. If Josh Okogie is not hitting the three, you can put that guy in, and he's another, you know, solid defender who can knock down the three. And it's just so hard to guard this team. Like, who are you supposed to leave open? How are you supposed to not, like, how are you supposed to double Devin Booker or Kevin Durant or both if the other guys are being, you know, such great three-point shooters? Like, how are you supposed to do that? Chris Paul is shooting, he's got to be shooting over 50% from catch and shoot threes now after tonight's game. And that's, that's absurd. What? <laughs> Chris Paul is knocking down the three ball. Torrey Craig's doing a great job. Devin Booker had a poor night tonight with 15 points, but it didn't matter. And the Suns offense just came in in a close game and just said, we're the better team. You can't beat us. And I know they're saying that to, you know, a Nuggets bench unit squad, but at the same time, it feels like they can do this to anyone. It feels like this offense could be unstoppable, but it does require all the pieces to still be in place. It requires Kevin Durant to still be healthy and moving around and, you know, Chris Paul, his wrists need to be working, you know? I like, I'm going to be mad if he injures, injures his wrist for like that 20th time in the playoffs because, man, if he's knocking down threes like this, please, please, please do not get hurt, Chris Paul. Like, like we need to keep him shooting threes at the same rate to win a championship because the way he is shooting the three, it really does just elevate that ceiling to a point where, well, it elevates the floor of the team, let's say that, because I feel like the ceiling was already a championship ceiling, but it elevates the floor of this team to a point where we can have Chris Paul on the court and he is not someone you can just leave open. You can't just, you know, <laughs> ignore him. He is knocking down threes, he's a real threat. You might even have to stay glued to him at some times, but it's just gonna be really tough for most teams to defend the Suns. Um, like maybe there are some teams out there in the Western Conference, particularly in the first round, that might be a big, you know, deal in terms of uh, who can defend them. The Lakers and the Clippers probably have some of the best odds at actually shutting down the Suns in terms of just advantage creation. But at the same time, as Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, like there's going to be options open and. Uh, the Lakers and Clippers, who seem to be the two most likely first round matchups, maybe it will be the Warriors, who knows, but the Clippers seem to be the most likely, they got a lot of length, they got quickness, so maybe they could deal with the Suns offense, but then again, we've are, I've already talked about this a few times now, but this defense has also been really good when they need to be. Um, Kevin Durant is a, a weak side, a, a secondary rim protector, I've talked about this a lot, I'm not going to go into it again, but... Yeah, Kevin Durant's been a fantastic help defender. We know Devin Booker come playoff times go to a whole nother level as a weak side rim protector. Like, that's basically a third rim protector alongside Kevin Durant and DeAndre Ayton when Devin Booker's fully locked in, especially during late game situations. It's really impressive what he does in terms of being like a 6'5 shooting guard and being just such a great, you know, vertical help defender who occasionally blocks shots, but mainly just uses his verticality to make defensive plays. And 
yeah, you add in Chris Paul still not being a hole defensively. Torrey Craig potentially not being a hole defensively. I mean, we saw how Luka Doncic owned him last year, but then again, Luka Doncic might not even be in the playoffs. So uh, we'll, we'll see how Torrey Craig handles it. We'll see if Josh Okogie can stay on the floor. He also played 22 minutes tonight to Torrey Craig's 22 minutes and not the biggest of nights, but we, we've we seen how Josh Okogie is a good complimentary option alongside the starting lineup. If he's knocking down the three, it's better to keep him in the starting lineup because he's a better off the dribble option than Torrey Craig is. He's also better at drawing fouls and he's just a way better defender. So I, I would like to keep Josh Okogie in the starting lineup despite the, the shooting struggles. On the year, Josh Okogie is shooting 34% from three. I mean, that's still somewhat decent, but yeah, you would like it to be better for sure. And the Suns did play a lot of minutes tonight for their starters. 41 minutes played for Kevin Durant against the Nuggets bench unit. That's an interesting decision. Chris Paul and Devin Booker were 37 minutes apiece and DA with 32 minutes. And yeah, the starters played a lot. They're getting more used to playing together, especially when we saw that bench unit with Kevin Durant out there and Chris Paul. That's where you really want to see things start to click with Kevin or with Devin Booker off the floor. And it really start this really started to make more sense. Like we're seeing this offense be able to operate through Kevin Durant more. I mean, there's a reason he had 29 points tonight on 18 shots, six for 13 from three. He also had four dimes. Like Kevin Durant is fitting into this offense. I mean, it's Kevin Durant. Of course, he's going to be a great offensive force, but just seeing him be incorporated in more to what the Suns, you know, <laughs> like doing, that's, that's what we like to see. And I still feel like there's probably a lot in the tank that we haven't even seen yet because it's just the regular season and we're going to be saving some of that, you know, uh, some of these greatest plays for the playoffs, you know? But yeah, seeing those normal late game sets that the Suns run, double drag in particular, with the double screens, and yeah, either Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, Devin Booker wa working off of them, it's been so effective, and just spamming it over and over, it's just really, really hard to guard this team. And yeah, I mean, uh, teams gotta figure it out, other teams gotta figure it out, the Suns just have to figure out to make how to make their offense even better. And yeah, I don't think we've even seen like the <laughs> the beginning of how much we can use Kevin Durant in the elbow sets and using him to attract attention or just to knock down those mid-range jump shots. I think there's a lot to come in terms of what the Suns are going to do with their offensive uh, sets and offensive abilities. They're going to be working on a lot. We're going to have a few days off with the play and tournament going on. And they're going to get a lot of practices in. They're going to get a lot of plays in. And it's just going to be that much harder to stop the Suns offense as time goes on. We'll see if they actually play tomorrow night against the Lakers. I mean, it's a back-to-back -back on the road and going from home to road. And yeah, I mean, you don't need to play. The Suns are locked into the fourth seed, if you didn't know that already. And they can't go up, they can't go down. And the Lakers, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you want to see them in the first round. Maybe you don't. Um, That's kind of a topic for another video. Because, yeah, I'm kind of just waiting to see who we are playing in the first round before I start talking about the playoffs. But Lakers, Clippers, Warriors all seem to be options. I think technically someone else is able to play us. I think it's the Timberwolves or the Pelicans. I'm going to check that real quick. But yeah, uh, the Suns have some potential version of matchups against any of those teams. There's so many things that can happen considering... There's like two games between them. The Clippers at 42 and 38 in the fifth seed currently. Warriors 42 and 38. The Lakers 41 and 39. The Pelicans 41 and 39. And the Timberwolves 40 and 40. It's, you know, a big mess right there. And I'm just kind of waiting to see how it plays out in the last two or three games of the season for all these teams. And then we start talking playoffs, you know? Well, we'll have a fun time then. But for now... Kevin Durant's still undefeated in a Suns jersey, and that's a great sight to behold. I wish it would continue into the playoffs, but I'm doubtful considering the uh, lack of talents the Suns have actually played against. I mean, the best team they've played against, I believe, with Kevin Durant has been the 40-40 uh, and 40 Timberwolves. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've played the injured Nuggets twice, so it's not exactly been the stiffest of competition, but the Suns are still undefeated, and that's, you know, it's an impressive thing to do. Anyways... That's about it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed and you made it all the way to the end and you aren't already subscribed, maybe scroll down and hit subscribe. That'd be pretty cool. Pretty cool. There we go. English.
All right. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay,